<laughs> okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to the <coughs> Sunday morning session on Mesozoic marine reptiles. And we have two fabulous speakers this morning. We have Luke and Richard. So we're going to start off with Dr. Luke Edward Muscat. Now, I've only just really met Luke. We had a few exchanges in email before. But Luke completed his PhD at the University of Southampton in the Faculty of Engineering and the Environment. And he's currently working as a laboratory assistant in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Imperial College, what we used to call MechEng, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's still called that. Um, now, Luke's, Luke's work is all about what happens when things flap around underwater. And particularly, he's interested to know how it is that plesiosaurs, with their particularly unique four-flipper swimming motion, how they swim and their hydrodynamics. And his PhD was entitled The Hydrodynamics of Plesiosaurs. And he um, presented his main conclusions in a paper in 2017 in the Proceedings of the Royal Society. So you can all read that up if you wish. But today he's going to take the next step and he's going to introduce somebody to you after he's given a short talk to introduce it. And the name of this person, <laughs> this, this thing, is Flip. So he is going to show you the first scientifically accurate swimming plesiosaur robot. I'm totally looking forward to that. It's very cool. Let's welcome you. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, so yeah, thank you for that introduction, Judith. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. So um, first of all, what I'll do is just give you a, um, an overview of the research so far and what I've been up to and how I got to this point. If you came to the panel discussion yesterday, you probably heard my sort of backstory. Um, but essentially, I did aerospace engineering as my undergrad. And I was always passionate about biomechanics, the flight of birds and bats and kestrels and things. And essentially, I was looking after my undergrad degree at PhDs in biomechanics. So I'm Googling like biomechanics PhDs. And this thing in Southampton came up, this project on the hydrodynamics of plesiosaurs. So my next Google was, what is a plesiosaur? Um, and obviously, I got a lot of stuff about the Loch Ness Monster. Um, but anyway, long story short, I ended up going down um, studying with Gareth Dyke and Darren Nash and Colin Palmer, who basically had resurrected this idea of looking into plesiosaur hydrodynamics. Um, so I was lucky enough to sort of take on this funded PhD project. And um, yeah, so I'll show you what I did at Southampton, and then I'll show you what I've been working on now. But first, why plesiosaurs? Why is it an interesting thing? So this is a figure from my colleague Susanna Katara Diaz, and you could, this basically shows a bunch of tetrapod animals, and the appendages that they used to swim with are highlighted in blue, and it's divided by various different things. And on the left, you've basically got drag-based propulsion, which is like a paddling thing, which is like if you're paddling with a kayak or something, where you're just pushing the water backwards. And then on the right, you've got more like lift-based propulsion, like the dolphin and the ichthyosaur. Bunch of other different things, but basically the take-home message of this slide is plesiosaurs are the only animals that swim using quadrupedal underwater flight. All of their limbs are these very um, streamlined, hydrodynamic wing shapes. So they're the only animals that have four of them. Turtles have these sort of wing-like flippers, but they only use their front pair to push themselves through the water, and the back pair is used for steering. So what is it about having four big wing-like flippers that makes you Good, like what are the hydrodynamic advantages of having these flippers? That was the question, and that's what I tried to answer in my PhD and what I continue to, to look at. Um, 
these wing-like flippers you can see here this is these are the three extant analog species that i use so the sea lion turtle and penguin all use an up and down underwater flight propulsion uh, and you can see basically that all of the uh, flippers are a wing they taper distally and they have an airfoil cross section and they are used in the same way as a wing is used. A stiff into a paddle or a, um, a webbed foot, which doesn't taper distally, it actually expands, right? It gets bigger. So you can see the plesiosaur is similar to these. Um, how do you create a plesiosaur flipper? Well, you need to combine this top down planform view with this cross sort of cross section aerofoil profile. This is the distal end of the humerus. So you can see it's quite elliptical. And if you were to add the soft tissue that you, that you can sort of estimate from the extant analogs, essentially you can come up with this sort of flipper shape. So 3D print that. And then you need to know about the mechanics. Um, that was just the shape. But then you need to know how to flap it. Again, I'm using these extant analogs. So I've got the sea lion, the penguin, and the turtle. And essentially, you can see here, it's this dorsoventral underwater flight. The exact specifics of the stroke pattern are not that important, really, if you're talking about <clears throat> just general overall performance. But it's something like a closed loop, or it's a sort of figure of eight. But mostly, it's dorsoventral with a little bit of anterior-posterior motion. So this is the stuff in Southampton. This is a dramatic opening shot. And here I am turning on some lights with my <laughs> finger. And here is a test tube and die because it's science. And obviously it's kind of like chemistry or something. Again, we're turning on things. And this shot is the big motor that powers the flume tank. And it definitely goes on too long. <laughs> here is a shot of the front flipper with a GoPro in the water at the back. And here is me with hair and eyeliner. <laughs> um, here's a shot from the top. So you can basically see it's a CNC machine. And it's just sticking two flippers in the water. So this stuff I did at Southampton. I built this between 2012 and 2015 or so. And just looking at the flippers. So I was ignoring any effects of the head and the neck and the tail. and whatever, but looking at the fluid mechanics. So this is some flow visualization. This is shot from the bottom. But this is the thing I use to measure the forces. And there are some forces on the screen. Um, this is a shot from the side. You can see the red die is coming from the front flipper and the blue die is coming out the back flipper. So there's internal channels in the flippers to allow injection of the die. I, in this, in my experiments in Southampton, tested 16 different phases, so it's steps of 22.5 degrees. And this data is for a sterile number of 0.36. So we know from extant work by Taylor and Nuds and people that most animals swim with a sterile number of this. Um, but the important thing to take away here is this is percentage change in thrust coefficient of the back flipper with respect to the front flipper. So we always compare the hydrodynamic performance of the plesiosaur flippers to like an isolated flipper. It's like, what's the advantage of that back flipper? How is the back flipper better or worse than a single flipper on its own? So it's percentage change. You can see where it's green. We have up to 40, 50 percent increase in thrust coefficient of the back flipper. And where it's red, we have, you know, far less basically. This was the main take home message of my PhD and this Royal Society paper. The hydrodynamic performance of the hind flippers is affected by the wake of the front ones. And sometimes it's much better and sometimes it's worse. And that's all to do with the phasing between them. So what this means is the plesiosaurs would have to be very careful where they'd have to control the phase between their front and their hind flippers to maximize their hydrodynamic performance. Why is this though? What's going on? Because you can measure forces and you can get this graph, but what's actually going on? So that's what I looked into with the flow visualization. So here we go. 
So here we are, the front flipper is heading vortices at the top and the bottom of the stroke. You can sort of see them twirling around. And this is the high thrust case where essentially you can see the vortices here combining with the next one. So it's making a very strong jet, this vortex couple, pushing the water backwards very strongly. And the more we push the water back, the more we push the, the plesiosaur forwards. So the thrust that the plesiosaur produces is directly proportional to the momentum of the wake, essentially. This is the high, high performance case. And what this is, in this situation, basically the hind flipper is weaving in between those main vortices, which allows the vortices to combine. See, it's missing it the whole time. It's weaving in between this wake. It's never hitting the actual vortex of the front one. And now I'll show you the alternative case, which is exactly the same. Everything's the same. It's the same flow velocity. It's the same pitching angles. It's the same f flapping frequency. The only thing I've changed here is the phase between the front and the hind flippers. And what, I've, it, and what I've done is actually change it by 180 degrees. Because you saw in the other figure, the high performance and the low performance cases were 180 degrees different. This is the low performance case. And now it's hitting the vortices, you see, and it's a really messy wake. It's hitting the vortices and it's not good. The plesiosaur does not want to do this. <laughs> Definitely doesn't want to do this. There you are. So, just to um, hammer the point home, here is the same figure I showed you, and here are a few screenshots, or a few stills from the video. And you can see this primary vortex here, this shed vortex from the back one. This is the vortex from the previous stroke. And essentially, this combines with this and creates a very strong jet in the wake. This low thrust case, you see now um, the front flip is in the same location and it's doing almost exactly the same thing. You can see this flow visualization is very, very similar. But now the hind flipper is interacting with that vortex. So these are the outputs of the PhD. I'll show you I'm a real scientist. Um, <laughs> but obviously, like, it's kind of interesting. So we've got lots of media coverage. Um, my favorite one being this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what now? Ooh. <laughs> the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs>